Hi, I'm Walter. I'm the Dutch Mentor, and welcome. Uh, today's talk is about getting yourself set up for success. Uh, of course, it starts with a solid foundational educational platform, albeit in bachelor's or master's degree. But it's really more about how can I set, up my, uh, set, my, set myself up for success uh, as I transition from education into the workplace, or when I'm in a workplace, in a role, but I want to go up. I want to reach my big dream. And it only happens with taking the small steps. We have broken that down uh, into three phases. One is how can I get to know the right people and, and understand uh, the business and making sure that I reach out to uh, the key people who can help me make introductions. The second part is how can I integrate into an organization? And then the third part is about how can I start my job and to make sure that I take the projects, uh, having the right people in the right roles, making sure that I have a deep understanding of what it is expected of me, and then to assign the right metrics and the cadence of accountability, and of course, take action in order to get that ball across the finish line, because that's how you build a reputation in your organization, not just as a doer, but as a leader, as a facilitator. So why don't we get started? And the first area of uh, interest, of course, is about learning how to be a really good uh, you know, person that is, has an understanding of their personal brand that is real value. And that is something that you have to take into consideration everywhere you go. It's like the old Disney model, right? When you are at Disney, the expectation is that every single person is on stage at all times. But think of you, somebody, if you're walking around with a logo with an, with an ID band around your neck, well, no matter where you go, if it's a grocery store, your doctor's office, you are representing that brand. So that's the first place you have to think about. How do I position myself in my community that I'm well, uh, you know, respected, that I'm kind and courteous, and I don't upset the forces, right? So always remember, you are on stage at all times. Now, as you continue to learn in school and in the workplace, you're going to develop some of your natural strengths, what I call your superpower. You have to learn to understand what your superpower is. And that is something that you need to leverage going forward. The second, the third part of that is you need to start developing what it is that you really want to do in the years to come. So I say dream big, act small. Well, what that means is that you get, you know, some sort of a position or a title that you have in mind that you think that is your ultimate goal. Again, those who don't dream don't reach their goals, right? They limit themselves. So I want you to dream big and then pull it back down. Okay, what does that look like in the future? What are the gaps between where those people are and where I am today? Often it is experience, right? That five or 10 years of experience. But there are other things along the way that you can continue to work on. And of course, knowing that you have to break it down. What is it that I'm doing today and how can I have a material impact on my cont continuous learning cycle, my self-development cycle, to be in a better position, right? The second part is really understanding your industry. So you have to do some research on your part in order to be able to uh, you know, refine uh, where you want to work. So I always say, listen, draw a 50-mile radius around your house. And, and maybe a 75 mile radius after that, or even a nationwide radius, depending on what it is that you want to do. But each radius should contain who you want to work with uh, and, and what their ethical standards and what is their onboarding process or do they have open roles or who works at the location that you might be connected to or you need to build connections with. Right? First, for yourself, you need to find out who do I want to work for? Why, right? What is your mission? What is, what is your, your driving force behind you? And once you have an understanding, that might be two or three different companies within a 50-mile radius. Start building meaningful relationships. Find places like joining an ACHE chapter in your neighborhood, uh, if you are in healthcare, to get to meet people, right? It is really the networking that's going to help you uh, get a job. You might not know that today, but certainly for director level up roles, most of it is done through networking. It's no longer done through a, uh, a, you know, simply applying to a hospital. It might actually not be the right way to do it. The fourth, you know, the, the third or fourth point is about putting yourself out there, right? You can't just become part of an association. You have to actually go to these events and you have to be open-minded. You have to learn how to work the room. 
that is not by going to the click that you already know, right? It is about setting yourself up for success by saying, listen, I am going to meet five new people tonight. There's not five new people that you want to meet to say, listen, I need a job, right? It's more about get, learning how to relate to somebody, right? Get to know them. See if you can exchange a number. Maybe you can have a follow-up conversation about their career path. It is the relationship building that you do that will get you the job you want, eventually speaking. Now, the most important part is that most people think that they're ready for an interview. But the real truth is that 95% of the people that I work with have that exact same thought, but they're really not ready. They have you know, a very difficult time describing their own purpose. They often ramble on. They are not very good in storytelling. So if in order to get ready for an interview, you have to put some real work into it. Now, the beautiful thing today with uh, chat GPT or AI is that you can go and find what the most relevant questions are for your particular industry. Once you know that and understand that, you can prepare yourself for that. But I still say that you really should make it a point to work with a coach or a mentor to prepare yourself for the interview. Right? Those who go underprepared often don't get invited back. Right? So if you want that position that comes with a 5, 10, 20 percent raise, just think about it. If you go in there unprepared and you miss out on that, take the compounding effect of that missed opportunity over a lifetime that could be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right? Just for that reason alone, why not invest a thousand, a couple thousand dollars and work with somebody to make sure that your personal brand is well represent, represented, that you can clearly articulate what your natural strengths are, what kind of a leader that you will be, or how you can contribute, or how you can be a phenomenal consultant. Right? This is of real value. So again, to reiterate, it starts about making sure that you know and understand your skills, knowledge, and abilities. Making sure that you research the market. Make sure that you network highly effective in the relevant industries that you seek. Right? Tailor your application to who you're applying to. Don't make it a generic one. And relentlessly prepare for your interview. So part two is about how can I integrate into a company? Now, my first off the bat suggestion is always 30, 60, 90. It's really phase one, phase two, and phase three. But in there, there are a couple of things embedded we'll talk right now. It's really, as you come into the organization, you cannot be you or what you are used to, right? Every organization has a pulse. You need to learn about the company's rhythm, right? It starts with their value, their values, mission, and, and company goals. What are their North Star, right? How do they assess the goals? And that is really about meeting as many people as possible above you, to the side of you, and below you, and spending quality time building relationships and getting to understand the true culture of the organization. You rarely find that out in an interview process alone, right? You can learn on glassdoor.com of people who have worked there in the past. You can call people or see people on a networking event. But this is the real only one opportunity you have to, to start building lasting, meaningful relationships that can maybe even develop into partnerships over time. That should be your first focus as you come into the organization. Resist the temptation to being sucked in that vortex of meetings, right? It is about how you can learn to relate to each other, how you get to understand the organizational rhythm that will allow you to integrate much faster. Well, in that process, you can really refine two things. A, you can establish your effectiveness in communication, right? Both, uh, you know, sometimes they say less is more, right? You do a little less talking, do a little bit more listening. You are carefully understanding what the current problems are. And then to restate that, so you, to show that you actually have actively listened to the conversation. And of course, you want to do a follow up too. You want to show that you take initiative as you come into the organization. You can't just sit back for 90 days and do nothing. So as you go on out and listen to the organizational uh, problems, find that one little thing that you maybe can create a win around, especially if it is you know, based on using your supernatural strength, right? Being positive, being out there, showing initiative, getting involved and understanding without driving every single conversation, right? Because that's with ego. You want to be humble. You want to be confident but you want to be engaged. And at the later part of your 90 days of phase three, you want to start getting some feedback from people. Say, how am I doing? You know, what am I seeing, listening, feeling? 
you know, how am I presenting myself? That is really food for your brain, right? That is really phenomenally important for your career, getting feedback. And people frown upon that. Why would you want to know? Well, if you were a servant leader, if you want to be part of a team, it's exceptionally important to get feedback. As long as you're willing to make these adjustments along the way to present yourself better, right? To improve your personal brand. And the third part of that is finding the right uh, job uh, as a consultant or as a, an employee. And as you integrate, be able to get that ball across the finish line. So my remedy to that is to establish what we call an operational rhythm. So I don't care if you're a consultant, you're a single contributor, you're a team leader. At the end of the day, we are all measured by our results. Well, there are five things that you can do and you can control no matter what it is in order to improve the chances that you'll have a successful outcome. Now, be mindful, 70%, 80% of the things we say we're going to do never happens. So this is your opportunity to make an improvement and hopefully reverse it, right? Get 70%, 80% success rate. And this is not about success on Monday morning that, no, no, this is about doing things on a sustained basis so you can change habits and behaviors into new normals. So it starts off with having the right people in the right roles. Do the people have the right skills and interest to be engaged in the project? I always say we want to draw a couple of fresh eyes into the project so they have a new open perspective to it. But you need to make sure you have the right stakeholders sitting around the table, right? Understanding that each of us brings a different strength and ability to it. It's the collective that makes us really, really strong, right? Assessing if we have the right capabilities. That is really what it is all about. So once you have that done, it is about, uh, you know, making sure that you have uh, a unified focus, right? What is it that we're going to be working on? Too often we go a mile wide and an inch deep. Well, we need to go an inch wide and a mile deep. We need to make the zero in on that one issue that is, if we fix it, will have the greatest impact on everything else. So we need to do a critical issue analysis. Take that funnel, start wide, and narrow it down. And only when you come out uh, with a handful of projects, now go back to that north side, which one is truly aligned to what it is that we seek to accomplish. And then define clear roles and responsibilities. Once you have that established, that project needs to have meaningful metrics attached to it, driving and outcome metrics, right? You need to be able to publish those metrics on a daily and weekly basis. We need to be in an open envir environment where people can see what it is we're trying to accomplish. And then, of course, you want to draw assertive feedback. This is where the cadence of accountability comes into play, right? It's the weekly performance report of the team members back to the team leader. It's also a good opportunity for the executive to come in once uh, every couple of weeks to listen in on the team to see how well they're making progress to an end goal. It is used in a consultant who has an opportunity, right? You can be an internal consultant or external consultant who can you know, showcase the work that is being done, the progress that's being made to an end goal. Of course, with the feedback, you can make adjustments. By maintaining a scorecard, you're going to be accountable. Right? And that scorecard can be used to report back up the chain, both internally or externally. And the last part is about taking action. Right? If we don't do things, nothing will accomplish. If we do things and we see it's not going the right way and we don't course correct, which often leads to failure. If we take action, but we don't measure it for a sustained period of time, often it will fall apart, right? It's only human nature to go back to what we know best. And it is not uh, what we, you know, the best intentions often, right? It is going back to what we are accustomed to, what is our normal. To overcome the resistance of change requires you to be persistent. And it's much better if you measure your performance along the way and there's common accountability, right? crossover accountability in the team, that each one of them is going to be contributing and being held accountable to that. Reward, recognize, and appreciate with an abundance, right? Be as soft as possible and as firm as you need to be. But the mindset is always about continuous improvement. How can we get a little bit better every single day? So that really encompasses the three big steps of setting yourself up for success. If you have any questions, come visit me at thedutchmentor.com. Book a free consultation. I'd be happy to have a conversation how I can potentially help you as an individual or as a company. I work with individuals for 6, 12 months at a time, 30 minutes per week to set you up for success. 
right? We make this large investment in our bets as a master's degree, hundred plus thousand dollars. But now take that extra step and invest that five or $10,000 more to go after the jobs that you want. Prepare yourself for a successful journey. Remember, nobody is in Paris this, this uh, summer in 2024 as an athlete without a good coach and a mentor, right? If you put the time and effort into it, make that one last little investment to yourself to accelerate, right? Work with somebody who's been there and done that so you can be an accountability buddy. They can help and guide you. Not do the work for you, but help and guide you. All right, have a phenomenal day. I'll talk to you soon again. Uh, come visit me at thedutchmentor.com and book that free consultation call today. Again, it starts with taking action. Thank you.